everybody. Uh, this is um, a little uh, Frisian mare of a lady in Sydney that I've been helping out with uh, for, for some time now. I come down once a month and help her and uh, today we've just been working on uh, floating so the owner can uh, not need a husband there when she floats the horse. So we've been teaching her to get confidence in the float and then we've also been teaching her to load in different ways. <clears throat> now something I'm going to say before I go on, this is an angle load float. Um, I believe that all horses should be taught to back off floats because it's safer if a horse backs off a float and sometimes in angle load floats uh, we can tend to allow our horses to walk off um, instead of back off and I think that's dangerous because you know a young horse if they're, if they're allowed to think that they can walk off then they try and spin around to push off and it leaves less room for the person to be safe. Whereas if a horse was to get a fright and back out, they'll back out in a straight line and you can sort of uh, feel a bit safer inside the float without feeling you're gonna get squashed. But anyway, I'm just gonna go through what, I, what we went through just to get her confidence on the float. So first of all, we wanted her to learn to lead softly. Now this mare had a bit of trouble in, in some of the leading areas where she, she sort of would pull back and get a bit anxious. So we teach them so they can softly lead and, uh, and and then we just teach her firstly just to come up on the horse float and just step on, step off, okay, step on. She's still a little bit squiggly there, you can see. Uh, and that's, you know, a sign that she's still a little bit worried. So, you know, we can work a lot more on that step on, step off. Now, the idea, before you think about even getting a horse on a horse float, um, I think it's very important that the horse knows to unload very comfortably. So what I mean by that is you go back and forward and back. And at any time you can stop that horse and just stand it, or you can draw it forward, or you can take it back and just stop her and then come forward at any point. And that's very, very important. Sometimes what I say to people is backwards means forwards and forwards means backwards until that horse is prepared to come forward at any time in the backup. Also, not just come forward, but stand at any time. So priority first is I go in with the horse building confidence. If the horse wants to think about the horse float or anything like that, then I'll stand back. I'll let it think, I'll let it sort of tap the floor, I'll let it sniff, all that sort of thing. And then uh, eventually I'll get him to you know, come all the way up with me. But by the time that I've got inside the horse float with the horse, the horse already knows how to back out because it's, back, it's gone backwards and forwards at every stage on that float so many times that there's no worries there. Okay, so once we've got that established, then you might start to think about loading that horse like think about preparing the horse for self-loading. Now, something that we did a lot with this mare, she, she sort of ran away from people from the side. So, you know, a lot of horses, they lunge by chasing them off, yeah? And you sort of, a lot of people send them out with a bit of pressure and the horse goes out on a lunge. Well, um, what I do is I tend to teach horses to really softly go past me and feel confident about that. And then I want them to go past me and not feel that they want to skedaddle out there. Now this mare, as soon as you sent her past you like that while her feet were moving, she'd ping off and go right to the end of that rope and want to run away. So what we did work with, with the owner, myself and the owner, is we, we got her to learn just to pass us like this and, and just walk along like that and not feel too worried. See how she can just wander off there without feeling she's, you know, worried or, you know, as soon as the shoulder or the hip passes me, she's not getting worried. So that's very important that you teach your horses just to lead through like that without any stress and if you can't get them to lead past you like that softly then I believe they're not ready to be self-loaded because that's a big thing in their confidence. So now what I'm going to sort of teach her before this, the, it, it, the, in preparation for self-loading is I'm going to teach her now to do what I just did just then. I'm going to teach her to, now I've already done this, uh, teach her to do that. Good girl and I'm gonna teach her to back off. But as I said just before, she's already very confident with passing me. So now she's just gotta do what she's already been taught with me is step on the float and step off the float and go past me. So all those things she already knows, you don't expect them to go past you if they can't pass you confidently, yeah? So then I might just help her up through here. Good girl, go past me here, okay? And 
I just do that, and just till she can walk in like that. So then I can take her and I can back her here. Good. Then I can step her forward here if I want. Good. Whoop, watch my toe. Okay. And just get her to softly back off. So, so she's been prepared by getting confidence to go past me. She's already been taught to unload off the float and she's taught to get confidence in the float by going in with me first because I'm the one that helps them with their confidence if they're not sure about the horse float. So now I'm going to go to the third stage and this is why I like horses to know how to lead. Um, now this is, is a way that I would sort of suggest that people prepare their horses to do so they've got an easy way when they're loading a few horses and they're on their own uh, to get their horse tied in there safely. I've got a longer rope and there's a reason for that. Um, because I like to teach my horses once I've sent them in like that to lead in to a dead object because sometimes we have our horses tied up to a dead object so this this tie tie ring in here would be a dead object uh, and if, if you do all the work with your horse and you don't teach them to walk up to a rail or something like that through through being tied up then maybe they're not going to be prepared to go in and and she got a little bit nervous when she saw that 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 rope stretched out up there and it took a little while just to get her to to step back and step forward until she was confident but now we're just going to show you so i'm going to walk out out here where i'm safe okay now she's safe because if she decided to run out at any moment i can let go of this rope and just let it slide back and she'll be fine but remember i've already taught her to back off Sorry about that, uh, the phone uh, just, just expired on me, so I've just reset it again. Um, so yeah, so now at this stage here, I'm just here fairly safe. She's there and she's technically tied up, so I'm gonna use that pressure from the tie ring up there to teach her to lead in, okay? So I don't stand here and go bump, 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 go in. I want her to think in and go in, not have the feeling that she's gotta move away from something back here, because I want the horse's thoughts in the float, not, not out here where I'm pushing them, but this is a good, thing to prepare them that you know nobody's perfect and, and 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 i've seen a lot of instances where people have sort of undone the the the, the uh, divider or the breaching bars on a horse float and, and forgot that they still got their horse tied up and so it's very important that we teach them to do this so they learn when they're tied in there they're tied in there but we teach them to lead up in there just like that okay so once she can lead up in there to there I make sure that I've got her head up there and she's got enough room up there that um, she doesn't feel trapped to the to the edge, uh, tra trapped into the corner. And now we can just gently rub her on the hip just to show her that, you know, that's okay. And I'm just gonna just gently move her across just a little bit like that, okay? And I'm gonna come in here. Now, as I said before, if, you, if your horse only knows how to walk forward off, it's gonna to wanna to spin around and get out of here, which makes this, is, this is gonna to wanna to come and push me over or something like that. But if she got a real panic, she only knows to back off. So she'd back out and she'd probably back out over there. So I could just step out of the way, because uh, it's gonna take her less room to get out by backing than, than turning around, okay? So very important that no matter what load you've got, I think it's very important just to teach them to back off and that's the only habit that they know. Okay, good. Then we can do that up, okay? And then, now this float hasn't got it, so I will do that up now. I'll just do that up there. Uh, just like that. Now, I've got this nice long rope here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take it across here. Now, I've got a choice. Now, this float hasn't, hasn't got it, but you, if I was loading two horses, um, I could put another tie ring here, so it goes through there, and I could tie this horse off just here. So when I come back into the float after we've gone somewhere, I can just untie here and stand back here uh, and, and unload. The other thing I could do is just gently reach in and have one of those. Uh, you know, some people have their tie, their, their tie in here, like a rubber tie or something like that. I could just quickly undo that knot, tie up. When I come back, I just tie up and then then take her off so I'm just going to go to the unloading part of it now so I'm going to pick up this rein here so I've untied her potentially from here she's still is still a bit nervous in here this mare as you can see she's you know it's taken a lot of work to get her quiet and 
and just real calm and soft about things. But she's 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 not just one of those mares that just copes with with everything. She she is worried about things. Um, that's why it's very important to build her confidence. Definitely build it, not destroy it. Okay, so now the next thing, because I'm gonna now, as I say, if she was to run out now, if I stepped across here, generally she's gonna run off and I'll be safe, okay? So I'm gonna just take that out of the way, okay? Now, we're back to being fairly safe here. Now, she knows she never turns and goes out, so that's very important. She waits, okay? What we're trying to teach her is to wait, not when I take this away, she just doesn't step across and prepare to back off. She waits up against that divider because for a young horse like her, I would rather go in and teach her to back off very carefully. So I'm going, she waits in that position, then I come up, I secure a good spot here. So now I'm safe, you know, she runs out, She's I, I'm in front of her, yeah? So I'm just gonna take that, and she's already starting to wanna go back. Now, if you unload your horse every time you stop, then they will unload, so you have to be very careful. So I'm just gonna show you what I'm gonna do here. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take that through now I'm just going to step her forward before I back her. Step her forward, okay? So she backs up the next, so now I'm going to step her back. And then I'm going to step her forward. Good. I'm going to step her back. And, and, and I think every horse should be unloaded like that because then they're always prepared to come forward at any time. You know, if you went to a show and some, some poor toddler got a little bit lost around behind your horse float and was walking there and you couldn't stop your horse, uh, you know, there's a potentially dangerous situation. So basically, every horse I unload, I unload them like a yo-yo. I just unload them connected to me. So it's not about on or off, it's just you connect it and unload, okay? And... And there we go, we get back, oh, but if we wanted to come back on, we could, yeah? At any stage, okay? So, and that's it. And that's just some ideas on floating that, that I hope might, might help you out. Thanks very much.